morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. 2023 is here. Yeah, thank you. So our gathering is going to feel just a little bit different today. One of the main ways it'll feel different is going to be shorter. Um, that's different. Um, hopefully. I said in the pastor's update, y'all probably don't believe me at this point, and that's fine. <laughs> Come by that honestly. We're going to focus on prayer uh, today. Uh, so what I want us to, to be thinking of uh, is right after we have our announcements, we're going to read the Lord's Prayer together, and then I'm going to pray, and then we're going to move into singing. And what I hope we can do when it comes to our singing is we can think of it in terms of us speaking in worship to God. So we're actually praying to Him as we sing. So that'll be our posture today, as a posture of prayer and, and reverence. But a few announcements first. We have... Uh, these Colossians journals, they are on the Connect desk in the back. So next week we start a sermon series through the book of Colossians. These are free if you think you'll use them now or even three years from now. They're free. If you're just someone who likes to collect free stuff even though you don't use it, then you can pass on it. But for everyone else, these are these are free. I know some people just like free stuff, so forget you. Um, you I got a New Year's resolution for you. Um, we have a web app now as well. So if you go to the App Store for uh, Apple or Amazon or Android, and you type in Mercy Village Church, you'll find it. Um, that's the, we're the only ones that have that weird name for our church, so you'll be able to find it easily uh, there. And then lastly, these prayer sheets that I handed out or that were handed to you on the way in. Hopefully you got one. If not, they're on the connect table in the back. Your pastors want to pray for you this year. And so this is an opportunity for you to write one or two things, run two or three things you're praying for in 2023, and we'll join you in it. If you want to do it anonymously, you can. Uh, if you put your name on there, that'd be super helpful. We can, we can pray for you specifically. So as, you, as we go through this gathering, think about what those one, two, or three things might be, write them on there, and then drop these in the give boxes on your way out of here this morning. And, and uh, Josh and I are going to pray for these requests this year. If you need the week to think about it, that's fine too. Bring it back next week. Drop it in the, the give box if you're the kind of person that can follow through with that. I would completely forget if I tried to do that, but you guys know that about me by now. <laughs> Those are our announcements for this morning. We're going to read the Lord's Prayer together, and then we're going to actually talk about the Lord's Prayer in our gathering today. So that's going to kind of be the springboard for all that we we talk about today. But let's say this together, not just reciting it, but as if, not as if, because it is the reality, as we are speaking directly to God as we say these words together, and then I'm going to pray for us at the end. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever and ever. Amen. Father, we want to lean into that today and this year that we would be people who more than ever before value the opportunity of prayer to be in a relationship with You, to engage in conversation with the God of the universe. Might we not miss that in 2023? Might we not see prayer as a chore, but might we see it as just that, an opportunity to be in relationship with you. As we sing now, might we sing from hearts of prayer. As we go through the Lord's Prayer from Scripture, may our hearts be in that posture of prayer. And as we celebrate communion together, might our hearts be in that posture of prayer. Thank you for a new year. Thank you for seeing us. Thank you for your faithfulness in the past. And thank, for, thank you for your faithfulness and kindness in the future. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
Thank you so much, Mercy Village Church, for joining us. Please stand and worship with, worship with me today. I was buried beneath my shame. And who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. And I was breathing, but not. try to hide it was my time till I met you then you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day Dying 
with sinners and saints Heal the blind, the lost and the lame Even now he is in our midst Behold him He who chose a criminal's end Paid with blood to settle our debt Bearing death as he rose to guys may be seated. To this mic. You guys can sit on that front row right there. Make room for everybody. Hope everybody had a good Christmas. Uh, Eileen, I need you, please. Don't show anybody this yet. I want you to stand right here. Thank you. Abraham. Please, don't show anybody this. Please. Marley, will you help out as well, please? Okay, don't show anybody this. You stand over here next to Abraham, though. You've got to be in the right order. Oh, obviously. Okay, I have a question for you. Happy New Year, first of all. Who can tell me, not these folks up here, because they already have a part to play. Who can tell me what... J- Jacob? Listen here, punk. Um, Who can tell me what prayer is? Does anybody know the answer to that question? What is prayer? When you talk to Jesus. That's right, Jovi. Thank you. When we talk to God, when we talk to, you can talk to any, there's three persons and one God. Remember, God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the 
Holy Spirit. You can talk to any of the members of the Trinity. I know that's confusing, but you can. You can pray to Jesus. You can pray to the Holy Spirit. You can pray to God. But primarily we pray to God the Father. Now here are, is the most important question. Who can pray? Do you know who can pray? June, do you know the answer? Anyone. Anyone. That's exactly right. In fact, that is very, very true. Anyone can pray. Then there's one prayer that anyone can pray, and that is the prayer to believe on Jesus. God will hear that prayer of faith to put your faith in Jesus. But then all other prayers that are prayed to God, who are the who are the people that God promises to listen to in particular? Does anyone know? Phoenix? His children. His children. So if you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, then I thought that was a real baby. Jovi, that really scared me. <laughs> if you are a Christian, then God promises to hear you when you pray. So here are the car. Now it's time for these cards. Here's the question. For Eile, when can we pray? Anytime. Anytime. Can you guys say that? Anytime. So you can pray when? Anytime. Does that mean you can pray at nighttime if you wake up in the middle of the night and you hear a scary noise and you get really maybe a little bit afraid? Can you pray then? Yes. Can you pray if your siblings are being really mean to you and you're tempted to get really, really angry? Can you pray then? That's right. Yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, where can you pray, Abraham? Anywhere. Does that mean you can pray when you're at school? Yes. Does that mean you can pray when you're in the bathroom? <laughs> That's gross, but yeah, you can even pray there. You can pray anywhere. So you can pray anytime, anywhere, and... What does yours say? What can you pray about? Anything. Anything. You can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. So my last question then, because this is important. So prayer is talking to God. God promises to listen to his children, and his children can pray anytime, anytime, anywhere, about anything. So what are some things that you're going to pray about in 2023. Does anybody want to say something you're going to pray about? Okay, little baby. (laughs) He wants happiness on earth. She wants happiness on earth. Thank you, little baby. Does anyone else have anything they're going to pray about? That my dog doesn't try to eat me again. That's good, that her dog doesn't try to eat her again. That's a good prayer. Does anyone else have anything they're going to pray about in... 2023, Scarlett, do you have a prayer? That Christmas will always be forever. That Christmas will always be forever. That's a good prayer right there. Anybody up here have anything they're going to pray about in 2023? Marley? My sister not being always annoying and being rude. This is, we're airing some dirty laundry up here now. Yeah. This is, this is turning into the Jerry Springer show. I'm really, and now we're going to bring up Willa. I'm just kidding. That's not how, that's not the format. That's not the format for this. Okay. So, but seriously, and that is a serious thing. In 2023, you can pray anytime, anywhere about anything. So when you get afraid, or when you are thankful for something, or when you're nervous about something, or when there's somebody that you love and you want something good to happen for them, we can pray and talk to God about that. So thank you guys so much. Give them a hand. You guys can go back to your chairs, especially you guys. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, just throw it on the floor, Abraham. That's great. All right, that's always very enlightening as to uh, your parental skills, guys. Thanks for... I'm joking. That's a really mean joke. As you may have guessed, and and this is going to be a little bit different today, we're going to stop to pray a couple times through it. We're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer. 
And your kids are fine, because this will be kind of up and down, and, and they're, except for Jake, and he's not okay. But for everyone else, it's fine. If you go to Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4, in all honesty, it has been my prayer this week that the posture of our hearts would be reflected in what we're about to read right here when it comes to 2023. In Luke chapter 11, now Jesus, verse 1, now Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples, and he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. Two things. First, Jesus prayed. That should be interesting to you. Because Jesus is God. And Jesus took time to talk to God even though He was God. First thing I want you to think about this year. Prayer is not transactional. It's relational. Jesus talked to God because God was his father. Jesus talked to God because he valued his relationship with his father. When I think of prayer as a transaction, I only do it when I need something, when I want something, when I'm afraid of something. When prayer is relational, conversational, then we'll do it more frequently, because we desire the presence of God. So Jesus prayed, and then watch what the disciples did. The disciples saw that they wanted that. And they said, teach us to pray. Might that be our posture? Always. But in 2023, might that be our posture? Teach us to pray. Anybody here mastered prayer yet? Okay. Me neither. Right? I get... You never will, this side of heaven. Teach us to pray. So that's what we're going to look at today quickly. But my hope is that our desire this year, might our desire be to walk with God in prayer this year and every year. Father, might we know prayer as relational, not transactional. Might we actually this year truly desire Your presence. When we talk with you, might we talk like Adam and Eve talked with you in the garden before sin entered into the world. Might we walk with you and talk with you. Might we desire to just be with you. And might we see prayer as a great, as the medium through which we are talking and walking with you. And might we value it this year in 2023. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. The Lord's Prayer is fleshed out in its entirety, right? You might have thought Luke's version it comes up a little short. It does. He, he was giving us the cliff notes, right? That was his job. Uh, but if you go to Matthew chapter 6, you see the full body of the Lord's Prayer. And here's how it begins, verse 9. Pray then like this, Jesus said. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Three observations. First is the word our. Prayer is something that we engage with in community. As the people of God. It was a plural word that he said, pray that way, disciples. Our Father. You're not alone. You're not the only person who desires a relationship with God throughout history. Thousands, millions of people, the church, capital C, has desired to speak with God, walk with God, talk with God. You're not alone. You join a lot of people, past and present, and even future, when you pray. And we address Him as Father. That's intimacy. He doesn't say when you pray, pray great, God, 
so holy and perfect and untouchable, up in heaven so far away. He says, pray, Father. It's intimate. But, but he also says, our Father who is in heaven and holy. Here's the thing that we get twisted so often as the people of God, myself included. We talk about God either as Father and friend or as holy and other. He's both. Your holy and completely other Father says, I want to be near you. I want to be with you. He's not separated from you, but He is different than you. And that's good. The God of the universe, who the hearts of kings are like channels of water in His hands. The God who spoke the universe into existence. The God who has never sinned and is 100% holy says, I want you to call me Father. And be with me. Jeremiah is going to pray for us now. And he's going to pray that this year we know God together both as Father and as Holy. Thank you. We're going to turn the microphone on so you can hear me. Because without that, you can't hear me. So, um, But uh, I feel like it's... Uh, fitting that you open this instruction up with not only who you are, but who you are, Father and Holy. And that's something that, uh, to be transparent in front of a room full of friends, that uh, I need to remember this year. Not only are you Father, but you're Holy. So, as Paul said, uh, it's who you are, but who you are. So as we go in, uh, you're not this far off deity. You're also our father who's here with us. So as we go into this year, let us remember that you are here with us and you've shown us that through scripture over and over again. Let us remember that. Let us uh, remember the times in the past through years past that you've been with us, that you've held us in the, in the lows, that you've celebrated in the highs, that, uh, you're going to walk with us. Use that as strength that you to know that you're going to walk with us through the times that we're looking ahead. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 10 continues. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We've spoken about this a lot, actually, in the history, the young history of our church that we would be thy kingdom come people. That we would grow less and less attached to our preferences, less and less attached to our desires, less and less attached to our dreams and our plans, and be thy kingdom come people. What we're going to do right now, and like I told you, this is a little bit of a different gathering, is just privately in our seats, we're going to take... 60 seconds to pray, but what I want you to think about in this moment is for you to say thy kingdom come to God in this moment, what are some of the things that you need to let go of, some of the things that you're clinging to, even as you look into 2023, things that you want to control or see the outcomes be a specific way. For you to truly have a posture in your heart of thy kingdom come, what do you need to let go of? If you already know what that is, pray that God will give you the strength to let go of it in these 60 seconds. If you don't know what it is, pray that God will reveal it to you in these 60 seconds as we pray, thy kingdom come. And now verse 11, if you're still praying, that's fine. This is an unorthodox, an unnormal gathering. You can continue to pray. Verse 11 says, give us this day our daily bread. My question for myself and for us is are you desperate for God's provision or are you at a place in life where you think that you really only need God on paper, like you theologically engage that reality that you need God? But in your day-to-day -day life, there's really not any evidence like I've, I'm saying that as a person who's been there, even the days following Christmas, like that kind of in between. 
I found myself there. Intellectually engaging that I need God, but not necessarily desperate for Him to be my portion. It's really what this verse is about. But I want to caution us with the words of Jesus in John chapter 4, verse 34. He was hungry for something too. This is a verse about being hungry. Give us this day our daily bread, what we need. Verse 34 of John chapter 4, Jesus said to them, this is 12 year old Jesus, by the way. He said to them, my, or no, this is in the, sorry, he says something similar at 12. Here he is with the Samaritan woman. They're going to bring him food, his disciples are, but he says to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. I say that to remind us that sometimes what we think we need is not what we actually need. So as we pray this year, give us our daily bread, give us what we desperately need, might we be people who hold that with an open hand up to God? Saying, you know what I need more than I know what I need. And some of you experienced that firsthand this year. <laughs> you went through stuff this year that you would have never put on your needs list, ever. In fact, you would have put it on your, if, if it was even suggested that you would go through that in 2022, you would have put that on the do not need list. But God in His good grace gave it to you anyway. And I know how crazy that sounds to some of you in this room. Because I walked with some of you through these things that you would have never wished for in a million years. So as we pray, thy kingdom come. And then as we pray, give us what we desperately need. May we hold that with an open hand. That God will show us this year what we need. Carolyn's going to pray to that end for us this morning. That we would be people who receive this year what we truly need let's let's pray father we really don't know what we need and to be honest our hearts really often don't trust you um, to provide what we really need and so i just want to pray over this church and for this church and as part of this church today that you would give us what we truly need that you would open our hearts to trust you to give us those things. Um, I pray that as a church, we'll dream big and we'll plan, but that we'll hold all of that with an open hand um, and trust and receive from you not what we think we need, but what, what you think we need, what you know we need. And in that, that we'll find a deeper dependence on you and on each other and a deeper love for our community that we're in, um, not just our church community, but the greater tri-state area as well. Um, we do trust you and we love you and know that you love us more than anything. You love us more than we care about each other and you want the best for us, and we trust that provision from you. Um, for our individual families, I pray that you would give us a sense of contentment in what we have, being what we need, but somehow balance that with a hunger for more, more of you um, and more of the deep spiritual things that you give us. We just lift this to you in your son's name. Amen. Thank you, Carolyn, for reminding us of what I should have said. That when you pray for what you need, the primary answer to that prayer is going to be God himself. That what you need primarily is more of him. And so, might that be, thank you, Carolyn, might that be what we receive primarily in 2023. Verse 12 says, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Now the prayer gets a little bit <laughs> harder. Two things that we pray for. One, that we would be forgiven. Do you confess your sin to God? 
Is that something that you regularly do? You come to Him with your sin and say, I am sorry, I repent of A, B, C, D. Might we form a habit of that if we haven't? If we've grown lax in that habit, might we pick it back up? That we would be people who confess our sins to God. There's this beautiful verse, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He always will do it, and He's right to do it because He carried your sin to the cross. Confess our sins. But not only that, there's two pieces to that. Jesus teaches us to pray, yes, forgive us our sins, but do it in such a way that it mimics the way we forgive others. Might forgiveness permeate who we are, not just as what we receive, but as what we give. That's the harder piece, maybe. It might be hard to believe that God forgives you, but it might be even harder to forgive some people in your life who have done some things that really, really hurt you. I will caution you, forgiveness isn't always reconciliation. Forgiveness isn't always entering back into a relationship that might even be toxic or dangerous. But forgiveness is your decision to let go of that thing. To not fester it. To not hold on to it. To let it go. So what we're going to do, and we're almost done, We're going to take another 60 seconds in our seats and there's two things I'd like us to think about. What do you need to confess to God? And what do you who do you need to forgive? What do you need to confess to God and who do you need to forgive? If you know the answer to those questions, ask God to give you strength in those ways. And if you don't know the answers to those questions, spend these 60 seconds asking for discernment to know what those things are. What do you need to repent of? And who do you need to forgive? 60 seconds to pray. We come to our last verse of the prayer now. To recap, we've prayed first, God, teach us to pray. Make us desire prayer. Carry that prayer with you. from. If you don't carry any of the other prayers with you from this place today, carry that one. God, teach me to pray. And make me want to pray. That can be your first prayer of 2023. We've also prayed, God, might I simultaneously know you as holy and perfect and righteous and powerful and big and other, while at the same time, Father, Lover of my soul. And then from that place of knowing that He's good and powerful, we say, Your kingdom come. Not my expectations, not my dreams, not my hopes. Your kingdom come. And as Your kingdom is brought to bear, give me everything I need. Right? Knowing that His kingdom coming is what we need. That He'll provide for us along the way everything that we need. Need and then to last or next to last that he'd help us to be people of confession and forgiveness. He closes out the prayer saying these words and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is actually a little the most complex of the verses in the prayer. There's a lot of theological concepts underneath that 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 people ask questions about when they read it. Like one question might be, but I didn't think God caused anyone to sin. If you think temptation is temptation to sin, lead us not into temptation. Well, am I not already just praying for something God's already promised anyway? Because in other places in Scripture, God says that, right? You know there's some things God can't do, right? Because He's he's limited Himself to it. He cannot cause anyone to sin. He's put that own limit on Himself. So, If you think of temptation as temptation to sin, you might read that verse, well, I'm just asking him to do something he's promised anyway. Which is fine, by the way, in prayer. A lot of prayer is that. (laughs) Is asking God to do the things that he's already promised to do. That's fine. 
Other people see it as testing. Lead us not into like difficult circumstances. But God says in other places that He works through difficult circumstances for our good. But I tend to think that's it. I do think that that it's a prayer because there's two parts to it. It is to pray, God, I would love 2023 to be absent of those trials and temptations and burdens that are so rugged and hard and difficult while in the very same breath acknowledging, but evil is going to come. And when it does, deliver me. And so we pray, God, this year in 2023, the, the, maybe the theologically sound way to put it would be, God, don't let me be tempted or tried or struggle with anything that isn't going to re- be redeemed for your glory. But we're humans. So when our family dog died on Christmas morning, the most precious four-legged member of our family, that prayer sounded, no, God, why? Why would you do this on Christmas Day? I knew how devastated my kids would be. I knew it would be grief 101 for my family. God, no! I don't want this! But deliver us from it. Deliver us through it. And we're already seeing evidence of it happening. And that's, and no offense to Wally, the greatest animal on the planet Earth ever. That's just a dog. Y'all, we're going to face things in 2023 that will outpace that. I pray we don't. I pray we come to the end of 2023 and we're like, whew, finally. God taught us about Himself through generosity and provision and hope and goodness. And man, it was great. Our Instagram feed is just filled with, right, we do our little 2023 celebration. It's just like, man, good thing, good thing, good thing, good thing. It probably won't be that way. Not for all of us. So we pray for that. God, no, please, no. But if yes, and in the yes, Show us Yourself. Take us through it for Your glory. Take, it, take us through it for our joy. That's the close of the prayer. And so I'm going to pray that for us. That God would make our paths straight, but even when it's crooked, He would use crooked paths to make us straight. Father, this year I, I do ask for Your protection upon us. That You would preserve us from struggles and testings and temptations. But I pray on top of that, overarching all of that, that whatever comes to us this year, You would redeem it for Your glory. God, I've... I've watched our people suffer this year. And I have seen you in the suffering accomplish things that you would not have apart from the suffering. And so I pray that if suffering comes to us in 2023, that the story will be exactly the same. We might not see it in the suffering. In fact, very rarely do we. We might not even see it in the immediate wake of the suffering. But I pray that you'd be kind to us and you'd reveal it to us. In our suffering that comes in 2023, that you are working for our joy. For your glory. And that we would come close to you as thy kingdom come people, even in the midst of it. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Now.
last thing. To pray, you have to be in Christ, except for that very first prayer. Jesus, save me. Anybody can pray that today. In fact, if you're not a Christian, pray that prayer today. Acts 16.31, first part of that verse, they said, this is Paul and Silas to a jailer in the, in the town of Philippi, they simply say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. If you're not a Christian, pray that prayer today. Start 2023 entering into the family of God by simply believing that Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the dead. And if you are a Christian, we have two immediate applications that we get to enter into as we close out the gathering. One, might communion this year be a time of prayer for us? Might it? I know even for myself, it becomes this checklist item sometimes in the gathering. Might God save us from that this year? Might we start by practicing even right now as we prepare to celebrate communion as a time of prayer? Confessing sin being called into the presence of of God as Father through the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Saying, Thy kingdom come in these moments as we receive the body and blood of Jesus. Application one. Application two. After communion, we're going to close with a couple songs. What I challenge you is to really practice in this moment. I know this might sound like we're turned into school class or something. Practice making those songs Prayers to God. I don't know what you need to do in your mind. Sometimes, and I'm weird, you don't probably need to do this, but sometimes I imagine being in the throne room of God while I sing. I don't know what that looks like, so whatever I'm picturing is probably way off base, but whatever that looks like for you as we sing, imagine, because you are in the presence of God, imagine the presence of God and and singing to Him in it. So to that end, we're going to celebrate communion. Now, here's the last takeaway that's not even in my notes. I love how clunky and chaotic the last two services have been. Christmas Eve was nuts, wasn't it? This hasn't been super easy either, and it's kind of been like up and down. We'll get back to normal next week. We'll make you all comfortable again. Don't worry. Prayer is that what? Prayer isn't easy. If you're waiting for it to be quiet and the light to shine down from heaven to engage in prayer, forget about it. That might happen three times this year for you. Prayer's a discipline. God will meet you there. Sometimes the sky doesn't open up and the sun doesn't shine down until you make that gritty commitment to say, I'm going to pray today, even though I don't feel like it. I don't think God's listening, man. I don't even feel His presence. I'm going to pray today. So in the chaos of your life, in the ups and downs of your life, pray. And we'll start now. We're going to play music. We'll come up, get the elements. It's our first communion celebration of 2023. Return to your seats. We're all going to partake of this together. So in this time, and even as the scriptures are read, you have the opportunity to pray, to talk to God. The old old Baptist preacher would say it's time to do business with God, right? And maybe for some of y'all it is. I don't know. Maybe you need to confess some sin. For others, it's just an opportunity to feel His presence. Right? Even in the chaos. To feel His presence. He gave you those crazy kids. Because He loves you. Right? No, I'm just saying. So take this time. In the chaos, in the insanity, to receive the presence of Jesus. He says, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood shed for you. That's a mystery. Embrace that mystery today. That you're actually receiving, spiritually, the body and blood of Christ again. That's insane. I don't get it. I don't even know what to tell you that means, quite frankly. Receive it today. The presence of God. So come, we'll take the elements, pray, and return to our seats. For those of you that joined us when we were over in that little house over on the main street over there, you you guys remember that? 
was like this every week. I miss it. It's not, I don't want to go back. I'm not saying I want to go back. I miss that. And it felt like that this morning a little bit. Like we're family. And now we're going to eat together. Like a little family. A bunch of jacked up, chaotic, <laughs> weird people. Coming into the presence of our perfect Jesus and saying, man, you gotta, you got to do something about us knuckleheads. And you did. Jesus died, was buried, raised from the dead, and now I'm going to take His body and blood afresh again. I'm going to remember what He did for me. Now I can walk out of here empowered, not my own, pull myself up by my own bootstraps power, but power that comes from God through Jesus. How beautiful is this opportunity? For I received from the Lord, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when He was betrayed, took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same way also He took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it. And remembrance is of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until it comes. Father, thank you for Jesus. As we sing now, to close out this gathering, might we sing with hearts of prayer, directed towards you as our beautiful Father who gave us His one and only Son, that we might sing not to a wall today, not to dead space today, but to you smiling down on us. (laughs) Because you see us not as knuckleheads, you see us through the blood of Jesus. What a beautiful lens. Man, you love to hear us sing. Even me, I don't sing good. You love to hear it. So meet us here as we sing to close this gathering. In the name of Jesus we pray. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets Till a virgin came the word To fulfill the law and glory Till a cradle in the Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom coming And to reconcile the lost To redeem the whole creation You did not despise the cross For even in your suffering You did know the other side Knowing this was our salvation Jesus, for our sake, you died Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King. Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb.
worm had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born And the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of hope Shall not kneel, shall not faint and By His blood and in His name In His freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who has resurrected me Praise the Father Praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, praise the Father, praise the Son. one more song it's called graves in the gardens i'm sure you guys know that um if you if you um, would like to feel free to stand with me and sing Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. satisfied here in your love. And oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than Better than you. 
You turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only guys so much for spending this morning with us. I'm going to make a New Year's resolution in front of you all to get your accountability. I'm not going to promise short gatherings anymore for the rest of this time, but I pray that you don't feel your time was wasted. I pray that you know that it was good to be with the people of God in the place of God. My this year, I love you guys. My this year find us closer to Jesus than we've ever been. Through the pain and through the joy. Receive this benediction. Please don't forget about these Colossians journals. We'll jump into that next week. And please don't forget we want to pray for you. Uh, If you need to take this home and ponder it, we'll hand these out again next week. But your pastors want to pray for you this year. So take one of these slips of paper and write down how we can. And we'll pray for you throughout 2023. Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. You're dismissed.